Hello, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to a new episode of The Final Call, where we continue to study the three angels' message. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you once again for the opportunity to study your word. And as we continue, dear Lord, to uh, study the things in which you have opened our eyes and our ears to comprehend and what is needful for us to walk with you and what is needful for us to avoid, I pray once again for your wisdom and I pray that the Holy Spirit open our hearts, our minds to comprehend your words of love, your words of counsel, and that we may heed the Lord to these things in which you are about to teach us. I pray, Father, man, that we open our hearts and understand you are a God of love and the only focus is to bless us and to save us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we continue to study mind, body, and soul because we're studying, my brothers and sisters, just how all of these things affect us. We began a few episodes ago, we talked about uh, the battle for the mind, how Jesus is trying to grab our minds to transform it, and Satan is trying to grab our minds to conform it. Satan wants our minds to be conformed to this world. Jesus wants to transform our minds and bring us to the divine, to get us to focus, my, my brothers and sisters, on eternal life. We studied last week about one of the ways in which Satan uh, attacks and tries to control the mind, and that is by fiction, by these things that when we read, um, we get involved in things that are not true, anything that is outside of the scriptures, anything that is not divine, anything that is not guided and inspired by the Holy Spirit is a dangerous book. Now, I want us to understand, my brothers and sisters, we have to go to school and we have to learn and have to read particular books. But as we do so, my brothers and sisters, I want us to do this in prayer and to understand man, that if it does not come directly from God, we need to be in heavy prayer. We, de we need to pray, my brothers and sisters, that these things do not affect us and begin to bring us down the wrong path. Remember, it only takes one misstep to lead us down to the path of destruction. God is trying to protect us. And if best, sometimes we may just need, my brothers and sisters, to walk away from these books even if they are educational, my brothers and sisters. Truthfully honest is this, no degree is worth eternal life. And I say this with all my love, with all the compassion that is in my heart. No degree. You're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven because you have a doctorate or because you have a PhD. But you will enter the kingdom of heaven because you have the character of Christ. And that is what is most important. So we continue today, my brothers and sisters, mind, body, and soul, how? Part two. And I want us to understand, man, how do I know that these things that are bad in the world? How can I sit here and talk about the subjects that I'm going to talk about today and talk about fiction and say that the world is bad and all of this? Well, it's one thing that I prayed to God about and said, okay, Lord, what is the best way to explain that? Well, notice, my brothers and sisters, that in Luke chapter 6, verses 43, 45, Jesus explains that. He says, for a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. In other words, my brothers and sisters, a good tree never brings out bad. And a bad tree, no matter how much he or she may try, will ever bring good fruit. For every tree is known by its fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. An evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. What is Jesus here teaching us? My well, brothers and sisters, a righteous man speaks righteousness. He speaks good. An unrighteous man will always speak bad, evil unrighteousness. Now we have to again look at the two individuals who are the main masters in this great controversy. There is Satan. Now we studied him profoundly and we realized that there is nothing good about him. He is evil. He detests everything about God. He is completely and utterly the opposite of who Jesus is and he detests everything that is righteous. In other words, he's a bad tree. And as we see what Jesus is saying, a bad tree can never bring anything good. So when we see the things that Satan brings out in this world, when we see the things that Satan is trying to entertain and amuse us with, 
we can take heart and know that nothing good will come out of it because a bad tree cannot produce good. The same token that we see Jesus, who is all righteousness, he is good in every capacity. We can see, my brothers and sisters, that everything that Jesus brings to us will be good. If the tree is good, the fruit will be good. If the tree is bad, everything that comes from it will be bad. So understand this, my brothers and sisters, as we continue to study. Remember who these things are coming from. And understand that if it's a bad tree, it's going to be bad fruit. But if it's a good tree, it's going to be good fruit. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now notice, my brothers and sisters, does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. This is Jesus is talking about Satan. When he speaks from his own resources, he speaks, when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. Why? He is a liar and the father of it. So my brothers and sisters, all this entertainment, all this amusement, it may seem entertaining, it may seem like it's something that is joyous, but remember, if it's coming from a bad tree, there's nothing good from it. We've got to understand, my brothers and sisters, that Satan is cunning, he is deceptive, and his focus is on your destruction. So if it is something that is coming from Satan, if it is something that's coming from this world, We've got to automatically look at it, my brothers and sisters, as something that we should not partake of. Because if it's coming from a bad tree, there's nothing good that'll come out of it. The desire for excitement and pleasing entertainment is a temptation and a set to God's people, especially to the young. Now, my brothers and sisters, I've heard it all the time. What's wrong with this? What's wrong with that? We get into these things because, again, Satan is focusing on distracting us from the eternal. Satan wants to amuse us. He wants to entertain us because he wants to hold us, my brothers and sisters, away from, from serious business, especially the young today. Remember that we talked about the children and reading this fiction, my brothers and sisters? Again, to you parents, pay close attention to what is being written here. Satan is constantly preparing inducements to attract, attract the minds. Remember, the focus is to get this. He has this, he has everything else. From the solemn walk of preparation for the scenes that are just in the future. What scenes? The life that they have to live here, and most importantly, when Jesus returns. Through the agency of the worldlings, he keeps, us he keeps up continual excitement to induce the unwary to join in worldly pleasures. Remember, if you make yourself a friend of the world, <coughs> you make yourself an enemy of God. The shows, lectures, and an endless variety of entertainments that are calculated to lead to a love of the world. And through this union with the world, faith is weakened. Remember what the focus of Satan is, to distract. But notice, endless variety. In other words, my brothers and sisters, he's throwing out everything at you. Everything that he possibly can, he's throwing it out there. And we're going to see, my brothers and sisters, that everything means everything. And Satan wants to amuse you. He wants to lead your mind. He wants you to focus on everything except the one thing you should be focusing on. And that is eternal life. And this is especially true for the youth of today. Parents, please pay close attention. God is trying to protect our families. Satan is a persevering workman, an artful, deadly foe. Whenever an incautious, that means a careless word, is spoken, whether in flattery or to cause the youth to look upon sin with less abhorrence. Remember, my brothers and sisters, as we are practicing these things, it becomes impossible for us to comprehend the great things of God. Sin does not look sinful. In other words, it's something we can deal with. Why, my brothers and sisters? Because our minds are corrupted. Our minds have been so brainwashed that we can't see the deceptions of Satan. He takes advantage of it and nourishes the evil seed that it may take root and yield a bountiful harvest. He is in every sense Love the word a deceiver. Remember, there's no lie, in, there's no truth in him. When he speaks, he speaks of his own resources. He is a liar and he is the father of it. A skillful charmer. He has many finely woven nets which appear innocent, 
because this is the big thing. Satan wants to appear, to, again, the question is always asked, well, what's wrong with this? And what's wrong with that? It seems innocent enough. It seems like it's something that's very entertaining. It's not like I'm breaking the law. It's not like I'm killing somebody. But again, this is the way Satan moves it, you know. It, it seems beautiful until you're trapped. Now notice. But which are skillfully prepared to entangle the young and the unwary. The natural mind leads towards pleasure and self-gratification. Remember, we're carnally minded. And we are naturally enemies of God. So when, when pleasure, entertainment, amusement is called upon, we will naturally, like the fly, goes directly to the light. We will go to it. Remember, Satan wants to conform us to all of these things. But Jesus is looking to transform, renew our minds change it completely and utterly so that we are not naturally inclined to go to these things. It is Satan's policy to fill the mind with a desire for worldly amusement, that there may be no time for the question, how is it with my soul? Now notice, this is what's saying again, remember amusement, entertainment, it's meant to distract. It's meant to keep your mind distracted from serious business. Always remember, my brothers and sisters, that this is what entertainment and amusement is all about. Notice what the Bible says, flee youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But notice deep, 1 Timothy 5, 6, but she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. See, you may think, but brothers and sisters, you're living it up, when in actuality, you're dying a very slow death. You live in pleasure, my brothers and sisters, you are under the control of Satan, and you are avoiding the only life that you can have. And that is through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Many are eagerly participating in worldly, demoralizing amusements, which God's words forbids. Now, again, my brothers and sisters, this is not my opinion. This is God saying very clearly, we need to avoid them. And we're going to see, my brothers and sisters, if you study the word of God, he tells you very clearly, have nothing to do with the world. He forbids us. We're going to see, my brothers and sisters, even in relationships, God made it clear. He forbids us to get involved in anything of the world, even in marriage, even in relationships, my brothers and sisters. To get involved in the world is to get involved with Satan. They severe, they sever their connection with God and rank themselves with pleasure lovers of the world. The sins that destroyed the antediluvians, and we talked about this, and the cities of the plain, that's just Sodom and Gomorrah, exist today. Not merely in heathen lands, not only among popular professions, professors of Christianity, but notice this, but with some who profess to be looking for the coming of the Son of Jesus, Seventh-day Adventists. If God should present these sins before you as they appear in His sight, you would be filled with shame and terror. Oh, my brothers and sisters, this is a serious thing. God is trying to save us. But we need to understand, my brothers and sisters, man, we get involved in the world. This is exactly how God is looking at us. Notice. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all peoples on the face of the earth. God has chosen us, my brothers and sisters, to be different from the world. Not to participate with the world, but to be different from the world. Again, Christ has nothing to do with Satan. Satan and Christ are complete opposites. Satan lives in immorality while Jesus lives in righteousness. And those who follow Jesus walk in his way. Those who follow uh, Satan walk that way. God has chosen each and every one of us, my brothers and sisters, to be children of God, to be holy people. Now, whether we go forth to become the holy people that God wants us, that's our decision, my brothers and sisters, but that's where God is calling us. Now, we're going to talk about sports. Now, most people would think, but listen, NFL, NBA, NHL, these things, my brothers and sisters, were not created by God. There's nothing in the Bible that says that. But we're going to see, my brothers and sisters, as we study, everything lies under the control of Satan. Yet the tendency of most athletic sports is a subject of anxious thought to those who have at heart the well-being of the youth. She's talking about the teachers who are concerned over certain students. Now notice, the teachers are troubled as they consider the influence of these sports on the students' progress in school and on the success of the afterlife. The games that occupy so much of his time are diverting the mind. Again, my brothers and sisters, what does Satan focus on? taking our minds, distracting us from the important thing. 
which is eternal life. They are not helping to prepare the youth for practical, earnest work in life. Their influence does not tend toward refinement, generosity, or real manliness. In other words, it's having a negative effect on them. Some of the most popular amusements, now listen to this, my brothers and sisters, this is way back in the 1900s, such as football and boxing, she mentions them by name, my brothers and sisters, have become schools of brutality. They are developing the same characteristics as did the games of Rome. The love of domination, the pride and mere brute force, the reckless disregard of life are exerting upon the youth a power to demoralize that is appalling. Other athletic games, though not so brutalizing, are scarcely less objectionable because of the excess to which they are carried. Now, my brothers and sisters, there's nothing wrong with playing a game of basketball. There really isn't, my brothers and sisters. But when you allow this, my brothers and sisters, to be your focus, when you live for the NBA, live for the Super Bowl, live for the Stanley Cup, my brothers and sisters, you're going right into the world. You ever wonder, my brothers and sisters, why it is that most of these sports uh, themes are always their sponsors of Budweiser, Miller, always the sponsors of alcoholic beverages? You ever watch some of these games where there are fights and all of these things break out? And I'm not talking between players. I'm talking about between stands. Google it up, and you will see, my brothers and sisters, that sports brings out the worst in people. It brings out the moralizing powers. And we need to be very careful, my brothers and sisters, what we're watching. Because, again, it diverts the mind. It focuses on us on things that shouldn't be. No one's going to get into the kingdom of heaven because they won many championships. They will enter the kingdom of heaven because they accepted Jesus as their personal savior. That's the only way anyone will enter the kingdom of heaven. They stimulate the love of pleasure and excitement, thus fostering a distaste for useful labor. You ever notice, my brothers and sisters, how many of these individuals in school, they, they cut class, they focus on becoming stronger, more powerful, uh, become a better athlete. Why? Because they focus on going to college. They're focusing on that big million dollar contract. And most of these individuals, my brothers and sisters, don't even know how to make a bed. Most of these individuals, my brothers and sisters, there was a story of a Dexter Manley. He was a football star, Super Bowl champion winner. And he once sat in front of Congress, and you can look this up, and he gave the testimony that he was a college graduate, but his level of education was that of a sixth grader. Because everyone was so focused on the star he could be, they passed him on and passed him on and passed him on, my brothers and sisters, till this man, a grown man, had the education level of a 12-year-old, a sixth grader. This is the demoralizing effort, my brothers and sisters, that sports have. Just look it up. Look it up, my brothers and sisters, and you'll see many of these stories. This is the effect that many sports have on us. They destroy, they tend to destroy a relish for life's sober realities and its tranquil enjoyments. Thus the door, remember, we cannot, my brothers and sisters, be automatically compelled by Satan. We must open a door, and it is open to dissipation and lawlessness with terrible results. My brothers and sisters, we need to be careful. And remember, my brothers and sisters, we don't necessarily have to be going after that million-dollar contract. But if our focus is on that, my brothers and sisters, and we entertain ourselves, we're just as bad as the prideful and the things that these individuals do. Can't avoid it, my brothers and sisters. But you must notice this is the, uh, the, the counsel that Paul gave Timothy, one of his disciples. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Again, my brothers and sisters, notice, it always comes back to the focus where on the Scriptures. Two choices. What are you going to focus on? Are you going to focus on these things and get so emotionally involved in your teams and in sports and in these desires that you lose your desire for God? Something to focus and think about. When the students at school went into their match games and football playing, again, she mentions it. When they became absorbed in the amusement question, again, the distraction, keep them from serious business. Satan saw it a good time to step in and make of none effect the Holy Spirit of God in molding and using the human subject. It is an easy manner to idle away, talk and play away the Holy Spirit's influence 
If one blessed becomes negligent and inattentive, remember, my brothers and sisters, our greatest need? By negligence, by rejection, they put away the word of God. Notice, becomes negligent and inattentive and does not watch unto prayer. If he does not lift the cross and bear the yoke of Christ, if his love of amusements and striving for mastery absorb his power and ability, then God is not made first and best and last in everything. And Satan comes in to act his part in playing the game of life for his soul. Big distraction. And Satan, my brothers and sisters, takes over. Powerful. Notice, my brothers and sisters, what should we be focusing on? What should be our goal in life? Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it, obtain the prize. And everyone who competes for the prizes is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. In other words, it's a crown that means nothing. But we, for an imperishable crown, eternal life, my brothers and sisters. What should our focus be on? Temporal or eternal? Movies and theaters, my brothers and sisters. Now we talked about fiction and we're going to go into a little deeper, my brothers and sisters. Among the most dangerous resorts for pleasure is the theater. Instead of being a school for morality and virtue, as it is often claimed, it is the very hotbed of immorality. Vicious habits and sinful propensities are strengthened and confirmed. By these entertainments, low songs, lewd gestures, expressions, and attitudes deprave the imagination and debase the morals. Every youth who habitually attends continues to do so, such ex attends such exhibitions will be corrupted in principle. You lose your focus and you lose your opportunity to grow. There is no influence in our land more powerful to poison the imagination, to destroy religious impressions, and to blunt the relish for tranquil pleasures and sober realities of life than theatrical amusements. The love for these sins increases with every indulgence as the desire for intoxicating drink strengthens with its use. Now notice, my brothers and sisters, got to understand this very clearly. It is just like you being an alcoholic. That's how strong these things are. The only safe course is to shun the theater, the circus, and every other questionable place of amusement. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you, man, it is dangerous. And if you don't want to take my word for it, you don't want to take my brothers and sisters, man, the word of God, I want to throw this in, my brothers and sisters. This individual is not a Christian. This is an individual, my brothers and sisters, who is an individual who designs and does a lot of this, uh, the propaganda. He does the advertisement. And this is, this is an individual way back in the 1900s. Listen to what he says. The cinema, perhaps the, mo the most important of all the modern agents of propaganda, leading to worldwide uniformity. The great majority of the young people in almost all civilized countries drive their ideas of love, honor, and the way to make money, good clothes, from the evening spent in seeing what Hollywood thinks good for them. Hollywood is thinking for you. You ever wonder why, brothers and sisters, so many clothes sell out so quickly? You ever wonder, my brothers and sisters, why so many things sold? Advertise me. You ever wonder why, my brothers and sisters, the world follows a certain conformity? Why the world is all unified in the way it dresses, it thinks, the way it does? Hollywood tells you. This, this is, again, this is not a Christian. This is a man from the world explaining very clearly what he, as part of this unison, is doing. Notice, I doubt whether all the churches and schools combined have as much influence as the cinema of the opinion of the young. The producers of Hollywood are the high priest of a new religion. Oh, my brothers and sisters, and if you want to check this out, look up Hollywood, my brothers and sisters. I invite you to uh, study and to look up this uh, beautiful ministry. It's called Little Light Studios. And you will see, my brothers and sisters, man, just how corrupt Hollywood is. Just, I invite you, my brothers and sisters, to look at what these movies and the effects that movies have on us. Propaganda means the spreading of ideas, information, or rumor for the purpose of helping or injuring an institution, a cause, or a person. Ideas or allegations spread deliberately to further one's cause or to damage an opposing cause. Deliberate. Remember how Satan is. He works deliberately. 
Now, my brothers and sisters, I can tell you this before I became a Christian, that it was found out that when you went to the movie theaters, my brothers and sisters, many people would automatically get up and go to the concession stand. And it was found, my brothers and sisters, that while you were watching opening credits or while you were watching coming attractions, there were actually subliminal messages coming through the screen telling you that you want to go and buy some food from the concession stands. Oh, my brothers and sisters, man, this is how Satan controls. This, I mean, Disney, all of these things, my brothers and sisters, all satanic. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, they talk about witches. They talk about following your own heart. Don't take my word for it, my brothers and sisters. Do a profound study on this. Go, my brothers and sisters, into Google and just Google the effects of movies, the effects of Hollywood on the minds today. And you will see, my brothers and sisters, that it is completely and utterly guided by Satan. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. This is what we need to do. Who stops his ear from hearing bloodshed and shuts his eyes from seeing evil? Jesus once said that the eye is the lamp of the body. Now, if it is dark, the rest of the body will be dark. So whatever you're focusing on, my brothers and sisters, whatever you're paying attention to, that is what's directing your mind. And movies, my brothers and sisters, are meant to distract. Hollywood, the ugliness, and I'm talking about, and I'm not talking about the R-rated movies. I'm just talking about Disney. Just sit back and watch, man, who the heroes are. There's always a good witch, a bad witch. There's always sorcery. There's always this deception. There's always a liar. There's always someone following their own hearts. They never uplift God. They never present God in a very positive way. It is always, my brothers and sisters, to divert the mind, to keep you, my brothers and sisters, from the great question, how is my soul? Another thing that uh, it, it saddens me and it concerns me because I'm seeing this enter the church more and more, and that is dancing and music, my brothers and sisters. I'm seeing, my brothers and sisters, that we're participating in these things, even in the, uh, the, the functions and, uh, and the get-togethers that we're doing in church, listening to a lot of this music, listening to a lot of this dancing, my brothers and sisters, and this is dangerous. Listen very clearly. As ordinarily conducted, parties of pleasure are also, also are a hindrance to real growth. And we're talking about just birthday parties, get-togethers with the youth, my brothers and sisters. You know, these little parties that we put together for our children, my brothers and sisters. And we think that there's nothing wrong with the, with the music and the dancing that we're allowing. But listen to these words, my brothers and sisters. Again, remember, nothing good can come from a bad tree. They are hindrance to real growth either of the minds or of character. Frivolous associations, habits of extravagance, of pleasure seeking are too often of dissipation. Are formed that shape the whole life for evil. In place of such amusement, parents and teachers can do much to supply the virgins wholesome and life-giving. Nothing wrong with celebrating a birthday, my brothers and sisters. Nothing wrong. Do it in a way that glorifies God. Do it where your focus is on gratitude to God. Do it when in a party where you can actually invite God to be there and God will be well pleased to participate in that. And he will be grateful for your praise to him. But today, my brothers and sisters, we celebrate birthdays with dancing and frivolous actions, a lot of things, my brothers and sisters, that doesn't please God. It doesn't. Notice, in many religious families, dancing and card playing are made a parlor pastime. It is urged that these are quiet home amusements. In other words, there's nothing wrong with this. We're at home. We're good. We're focused. We're not doing anything. But notice, which may be safely enjoyed under the parental eye. It's harmless. This is what Satan always wants us to think. But a love for these exciting pleasures is thus cultivated, and that which was considered harmless at home will not be regarded as dangerous abroad. You realize, my brothers and sisters, man, that as I studied these things, I did a lot of clubbing in my days before God. And you know where all of that started? The parties at home. I learned to dance at home. I learned this music at home. This is where all of that started. And as I grew older, I went from having a home party to the clubs. I went from Coke, Coca-Cola, to a bear because it just continues to grow. The excitement kept building up. And every Friday night, my brothers and sisters, I couldn't wait to get to the club. I was waiting for the guys to call me up. Hey, we ready? Yeah, let's go. It became exciting. It grew. And these things began, my brothers and sisters, with little house parties at home. We think, my brothers and sisters, that there's no danger to it, but this is exactly how Satan works, deceiving, 
cunning. Always got to remember, nothing good comes from a bad tree. Will no longer be regarded dangerous abroad. In other words, if they can do it at home, they find no problem with going to a club and doing it there. It is not yet to be obtained from these amusements. They do not give vigor to the body, no rest to the mind. Notice, they do not implant in the soul one virtuous or holy sentiment. In other words, nothing good comes out of it. There is nothing of value that comes from spending a night in a club. Nothing. On the contrary, notice, they destroy all relish for serious thought and for religious services. The focus on the serious business. It is true that there is a wide contrast between the better class of, or select parties and promiscuous and the greatest assemblies of low dance hall. So yes, there is a difference between doing it in the church and doing it in a club. There is a difference, my brothers and sisters, with doing that at home and doing it in a club, but it's still the same effect. Yet all steps in the path of dissipation. It's still the same music. It's still the same dancing. It's still the same effect. Whether you do it in a club or you do it at home, the effect is still there. Eternal things have little weight with the youth. Angels of God are in tears as they write in the world the words and the acts of professed Christians. Angels are hovering around yonder dwelling. They are, the young are assembled. There is a sound of vocal instrumental music. This she's talking about an experience where the angels came to spend some time with some Christian youth. Listen closely to what happened. Christians are gathered there. But what is that you hear? It is a song, a frivolous ditty, fit for the dance hall. Behold, the pure angels gather their light closer around them, and darkness envelops those in that dwelling. The angels are moving from the scene. The Bible teaches us that David was able, through playing the harp, to expel the bad demons from Saul. Notice, my brothers and sisters, the bad music is strong enough to expel the good angels from us. Sadness is upon their countenance. Behold, they are weeping. The angels are gone. Notice, music is the idol which many profess Sabbath-keeping Christians worship. Satan has no objection to music if he can make that the channel through which to gain access to the minds of the youth. The mind. Anything will suit his purpose that will divert the mind from God. Amusement, entertainment and engage the time which should be devoted to his service. He works through the means which will exert the strongest influence to hold the largest numbers in a pleasing infatuation. Ever go to a concert and everyone is just freaking out at the concert? Power of Satan, my brothers and sisters. Paralyzed by his power, when turned to a good account, music is a blessing, but it is often made one of Satan's most attractive agencies to ensnare the souls. God's words. Music, this again, a worldly view. This is not coming, my brothers and sisters, from a Christian. Musical style has perhaps the biggest influence on the mind and character. Of all the forms of modern media, the root word of music is muse, which means to think deeply. The popular styles of music today hypnotically, remember he hypnotized, how Satan hypnotized back in the day? Hypnotically shut down the rational thought and turned music into a muse, which means to not think. Says A.F. Morrison, there is probably no other human cultural activity which is so all-pervasive and which reaches into shape and often controls so much of human behavior as music. Music is good if it's praising God. If it's not, my brothers and sisters, it is dangerous. If we venture on Satan's ground, listen to this, we have no assurance of protection from his power. So far as us in us lies, we should Close every avenue by which the tempter may find access to us. My brothers and sisters, once you get on Satan's ground, there's no protection. Again, my brothers and sisters, if God is not the one leading you, Satan is. And he is controlling. And he does not open the doors to his prisoners. Music of the world should be avoided at all costs. It should not be brought into the church. It should not be brought into any of the uh, entertainments that we do. Anything that we do in church, it should not involve. The, the music of Satan. Notice, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, don't partake with him, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. My brothers and sisters, heed the word of God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you. Because although we may get ourselves involved in these things, your mercy and your kindness will work with us as long as there is hope. I pray, my brothers, I pray, dear Lord, 
that my brothers and sisters and myself never go beyond the point of help from you. Please bless us and guide us to heed your words. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.